Good afternoon, viewers of Seven News Television. Once again, we are happy because you guys are over there watching this program, The Experts. We have noticed in our society that many people move around with bands on their faces, on their legs. Some have mouths that have been cut, but they don't really know what can be the solution to such a problem. In other countries, you hear people talk about plastic surgery. It is hardly found in Cameroon because the specialists are not there. I don't know how costly it is for one to become a plastic surgeon. Today, we are fortunate to have one among the million medical doctors we have in Cameroon who has gone through the normal training as a medical practitioner, but now a plastic surgeon. He's no other person than Dr. Sami Obun, who is going to tell us more about plastic surgery as the importance in our society. Good afternoon, Doctor. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Tak. Who is Dr. Oben Sami? Well, Dr. Oben Sami is, uh, I can say, is a, uh, a Cameroonian. Mm -hmm. He's uh, 52 years old. Yeah. Uh, he's married uh, to a beautiful woman called Dorothy. And we have five children. I, I was trained as a uh, physician in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Then I did general uh, surgery in the University of, uh, of Yaoundé One. And uh, I went to Belgium to do plastic surgery. So I work as a general surgeon and I work as a uh, plastic reconstructive and aesthetic surgeon. So who is a plastic surgeon? Well, the, a plastic surgeon is, uh, uh, is, 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 it involves two things. Okay. He's a surgeon who has had uh, general training as a, uh, a general surgeon. And uh, he also went further to have uh, some training into what we call reconstructive surgery. Yeah. Reconstructive surgery is what I would call body panabitin. He is a man that uh, does what the panabitin does to the car. When the, uh, the body is broken down, the reconstructive surgeon can panabit it. He can beat it to shape and then uh, so that it can now have a form and a function that nice. is compatible with life. That is one aspect of plastic surgery. The other aspect of plastic surgery which I like very much is the aesthetic surgery. Okay. The aesthetic surgery is for somebody who, uh, who has a normal form and function, but who is not satisfied with the form the, uh, he has. Yes, okay. And therefore he wants to increase the beauty of that form. Okay, I so I can call it the beauty part of surgery. All right. Uh, that is the one that is really sweet because it's expensive and has some money. It has money in it. And what does it take to become a plastic surgery? Or to become a plastic surgery, you, surgeon to be, like you? you just have to you have first of all to have basic training as a general physician, a general doctor, a general uh, surgeon. Surgeon. After general surgery, you go for two to three years of uh, plastic surgery training. Or if you're doing uh, plastic surgery directly, you can do for four years. All right. In which case, you do general surgery for two years and then plastic surgery for two, two to three years. Okay. That makes it two to four years right. of training. And how expensive is this training? Well, it's, it's a form of surgery that is reserved for the rich and is reserved for the privileged in mm. the society. I remember very well during my uh, training in Belgium, I had a surgeon, Professor Putz. He always insulted me and said, I don't know why a black man should be sent to do plastic surgery here. You should be concentrating on malaria. And that plastic surgery is reserved for the rich and for the privileged. Mm. That is what it is. And it has not changed. It's still the same. Uh, you, you can see that most of the people that uh, actually request for plastic surgery are the very poor who don't take care of themselves and their body is being damaged either by bones or by accidents or something they have a damage on their body or they were born with deformities then you now have 
the group of people which you call the privileged, the, privileged. the stars, yeah. the people who think that something is not very right with their body and they want to make it better. When you talk of plastic surgery, is that in the course of your work you use like uh, plastic papers or torture? I, you, you remind me of one of my nurses. <laughs> she, she always tell me, I have my friend who sells plastic. <laughs> and I said, oh yes, that's true. We do plastics. We sell plastics. Okay. Actually, it's uh, plasticus. It comes from plasticus. That is forming. Okay. Kind of, you're trying to give a form. You're trying to give a form to something. It means something is damaged, or something was born deformed, or something is in a state that you don't like. You want to plasticus it. You want to make it have a different form. And function. That's, That's why there are plastic surgeons today who can do transplantation of the face. Yeah. You have, if you have problem with your face, they can give you a completely new face. Oh, oh yes. That's why plastic surgeons are somehow criminals also because only that the only what is there is that the tongue, the fingerprint, mm. the print will sell us because they can transform your face completely and you will look a completely different person. But they can't take away your fingerprints. Doctor Sami, um, uh, it seems as if in Cameroon. Um, uh, practice like that is not common. How many plastic surgeons do we have in our country? Um, actually, we don't have a training for plastic surgeries in Cameroon, and that's why I honor my professors, Professor uh, uh, Anze and Professor Isumba, and uh, uh, these people, they uh, sent me to Belgium to be trained as a, a plastic Plus surgeon. Surgery. And um, I really honor them on this platform and I give respect to them, especially Professor Anze. And uh, we are very few. I used to know a Belgian who was a plastic surgeon in Douala. He's no more there. I know there is a plastic surgeon in Bingo Baptist Hospital. He's an American. He comes and goes away. Mm -hmm. At the moment, he's not, he's not there now. Uh, there are a lot of people who are general surgeons like me before who have done some little training in plastic surgery. As I said, plastic surgery has two arms. Yeah. It has the reconstructive part of it and it has the aesthetic part of it. Uh, most of the time, these general surgeons, what they do is that they have one or two months of training that allows them to work as a, uh, uh, a reconstructive so surgeon. Surgery. So they can do things like cleft lips, mm -hmm. they can do things like uh, bone surgery, they can do some things like normal surgery, those things that have to do with reconstruction. We are talking, yes. you talked of aesthetic surgery. Yes. Aesthetic surgery. So, yes. can you explain to our viewers what aesthetic surgery is well, all about? Well, aesthetic surgery is beauty surgery. That's all it is. It has to do with beauty. It means that, for example, a woman may have a small breast, which is not really small to call it a tuberous breast. All right. A tuberous breast is a woman who is born with very small breast. Okay. You know, a woman, for us as a plastic surgeon, a woman, the breast of the woman gives the form, the, the beauty of the woman. Yeah, I can imagine. So if, if, if a woman doesn't have breast, she's not happy. I see. So if a woman has a very small amount of breast, she may not be very happy because it doesn't fit very well into her dress. So in order that it may fit well into her dress, she needs to increase the volume of the breast. Yeah, yeah. And in order to increase the volume of the breast, you need an aesthetic surgeon. And is, is that not having an impact on the breast? No, body? it has no impact. Instead, I, 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 we did operate a woman 60 years old in Belgium, and I couldn't understand anything about this woman. And I asked the woman, I said, but madam, can you explain to me why at 60, 65 years, you're doing a breast job? Then she said, I'm doing it for myself, ah. not for any man. <clears throat> so you see? It doesn't have any effect. People think that it has effect. No. For example, if you want to blow up a woman's breast, a woman's breast, mm -hmm. uh, one, there are many ways we can use. You can put an implant inside. You can put something inside that will blow the breast. Okay. And there are various types of implants. You have saline implants, which is water, just water like this. We put water in a balloon. Okay. And we open the woman somewhere here and we put the balloon inside the breast so it blows the breast. That's number one. Number two, you can have what you call silicone implants. Silicone implants are implants. Uh, it's a plastic 
with silicon inside. Silicon is a very pliable material. So when you touch it, it's soft like the breast. I loved it. It's really <laughs> soft like a breast. So you can put it under the breast, and when the man holds it, because the breast belongs to the man, when he sleeps, he's put his hand on the breast, like that. You see? So when he puts his hand on the breast, he feels it's soft. Yeah. But still, it's a foreign body. It's put under the breast. Then the third kind of implants we have, uh, blowing up, is using the natural okay. fat. That's the one I love. Okay. You just harvest the fat from somewhere, from the woman's body, with equipment that we have now, that I have in my hospital. We have this equipment. We can harvest the fat, process the fat, clean it up, and re-inject it into the so woman. It's just like taking your plant seeds. Right. Mm, they begin okay. to germinate. So you take off a little shrub, you go somewhere and plant it. it. It's a transplant. And since it is uh, it, from, the one, from the same person to the same person, I don't have problems with graft, with graft reject. Okay. Reject. So the graft is there. So you see from the breast, we can do so many procedures that will give the woman a nice form. Mm. Now she can put on her bra and she will be filled up. Now for the stars. Oh, uh, yeah. The stars is different. You know, stars, they like to dress half naked. Yeah. That is normal for them. And so they want to have what you call middle, middle fullness. Fullness in the middle. So that when she wears her breast, it's full like this in the middle. It's full like this in the middle. Yeah. We can create that. We can blow it up. I don't want to call you the name of some stars who have it in Cameroon. But you all, you all know these things, you see. We can blow it up and the woman feels better. That's aesthetics. That's aesthetic surgery. I'm a doctor. And that's the one that has money. It has money. It so has money. So that means you have much money for me. Oh my, not in Cameroon. That, that's the problem I have. Whenever I go for a course in, in Europe, and people, my, my, I meet my colleagues who are now practicing, they always think I have a lot of money since I'm in Cameroon. Yeah. And not so many plastic surgeons are here. But <clears throat> poverty. Is there any um, uh, plastic surgeon board? Do you have any board? There is no board. I'm really, I actually, when I came to Cameroon, I thought we will valorize uh -huh. the teaching of plastic surgery and create more plastic <clears throat> surgeons in such a way that we can have a plastic surgery uh, board. For now, there is no board. There is nothing. You studied in Belgium. Uh, and uh, why don't you think such a idea should be brought into the Cameroonian um, uh, medical milieu? You, you are alone. Okay. You are alone. You form the board, you'll be the president, you'll be the secretary, you'll be the uh, doctor. You're just alone. I mean, I mean the aspect of plastic surgery being done in Cameroon. I have proposed it to my bosses. Okay. That's why when I came, I struggled to push the idea of plastic surgery because it is a very, very important aspect of surgery in this country. All right. Gone are the days when they used to think that when you think of plastic surgery, you only think of Michael Jackson. No, mm. that's not the only thing in plastic surgery. Bones, people who have yeah, people bones bones, yeah. and they are deformed with bones, <clears throat> you need reconstructive surgery for them. As I was coming now, like this, somebody just amputated the arm, the hand, the finger. Yeah, you need a reimplantation. It is a combination of hand surgery and plastic, plastic surgery. surgery. Do you see that? Yeah. So, you need this kind of people. So, I, I think that it is something that should be encouraged. We dearly need it. We dearly need plastic surgery in this country. We do. Yes. Doctor, in time, uh, in, uh, you are a specialist. You are a plastic surgeon. In Cameroon, how many times have you carried out such a procedure? I have several times. For the past eight years, I've been doing plastic surgery. And as one of my friends said, who came from Sweden to assist me, uh, he yeah. said, I don't want you to do general surgery again. Mm -hmm. I want you to concentrate on plastic surgery. It's good. I've been doing plastic surgery. I do abdominoplasty. Women who have who, who have Pats. put to bed yeah. and their abdomens are reaching here. They can't wear their dress. They can't. I take off the abdomen, okay. redrap it, fix it very well, transplant the umbilicus, put it so nicely that they are flat. Yeah. I do liposuction. Women who have a lot of fat, whom I cannot do abdominoplasty for them because they are still having babies, we suck the fat. I bought machines for that. We have this machine. We can <clears throat> suck the fat from the woman's abdomen and make it look flat. Women who have small breasts, I blow the breast up. We can put, we put breast implants in them. We also increase the size with fat. The fats. Women who have very big breasts until they have pain on their the neck. Yeah. I do breast reduction. I, I remove small, beautiful, succulent breasts for them. 
that wow. they can move around and feel happy with it. Uh, you see, people with uh, chains that have pelican chains, we suck them. We suck this, 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 and so, so many things. We do skin grafting, we do uh, uh, reconstruction with flaps. Uh, that one is a whole lot of other things that we do here. <coughs> yes. Dr. Sami Ben, you made mention of the fact that uh, it, it is an expensive surgery. So how are Cameroonians managing to pay you the, the, the cost? Again, as I surgery? said, there are two sets of patients I have. All right. There are one set of patients who are able to pay. Okay, and the other side. There's another pay. set of patients who are <clears throat> unable to pay. So, and how do you manage those who are unable to pay? I do them just for publicity's publicity. sake. Okay. I just did one two days ago. I blew up the breast of a girl. She had a small breast. I saw her problem, and her psychology, psychology. was so <clears throat> linked to this. I blew up the breast with fat. It took me four hours to do it, right. and I spent so much. But you know, when my staff came out, come, they come to me, they said, why do you do that? I said, I do it for publicity. You are more of a humanitarian doctor. Well, <laughs> um, it looks like. Okay. It looks like. It looks like. So, if uh, somebody, a woman has uh, fatty abdomen, what does it take for you to do it? Well, if a woman has fatty abdomen, there are two things. First of all, first you must do a proper diagnosis. All right. You must ask yourself this question. This woman, how old is she? This woman, what does she do? This woman, <clears throat> does she have children? Is she married? Does she have children? Does she want to have children again? Okay. Every time you answer this question, the indication for the surgery changes. Okay. okay. Do you see? I okay. See for example, if you have a young girl who has a lot of fat on her abdomen, she's not yet married. She's not yet married. Yeah. So she has to have children. And she has localized, what we call localized fat deposits in her abdomen. What do I do for this woman? I will propose to do a liposuction for this woman. A thorough liposuction. And you see, we can do liposuction by water jet, mm -hmm. or we can do liposuction by laser. We can do liposuction by ultrasound. Right. We don't have ultrasound. We don't have laser now, but we are going to be having ultrasound in the next few, couple of days. We'll be having ultrasound. We have the water jet, which is a traditional liposuction. So this woman, her indication is liposuction by water jet. All right. You take off the <clears throat> fat, take off the fat, read, arrange very well, and she will have a smooth, flat abdomen, and you take care of the love handles because. You know, many women want to have what you call the C-shape, the hourglass. Okay. The hourglass shape like this. Okay. That's what they want. So for that woman, that is what I would propose. But if this woman is married, yeah. has had children, and does not want to have many more children, any more children, and has excessive but amount of fat, fat. and skin folds, yeah. I would propose to do a total abdominoplasty for this woman with transplantation of the umbilicus with liposuction in the beginning. I see. So the indication changes with the questions you ask Ask the woman. Yes. I see. Doctor. Yes. So yes, sir. with somebody with a fat abdomen, how much will it cost that person? It will cost about 900,000. 900,000. A minimum of 900,000. All right, Doctor um, uh, Samuel Ben is really sounds interesting. I would like us to follow this report by Briz Gozok. Briz Gozok attended some, uh, a dental meeting and brought back this report. Une trousse de chirurgie de médecine bucco-dentaire contenant des daviers, des élévateurs, des pinces pointeguilles et même des turbines. Une exposition qui plante bien le décor du partenariat tissé entre les experts italiens de Delta Tech et Africa Health Group, venu ce mois de novembre dans cette salle d'un hôtel de Yaoundé, présenté devant Mama Fouda, ministre de la Santé, le savoir-faire qu'il devrait mettre à la disposition de l'Association des chirurgiens dentistes du Cameroun au cours des deux jours de formation que devrait durer cette rencontre. On commence à, à développer trois différents programmes. Il y a un programme de formation qui s'appelle Dental Academy, c'est-à-dire qui on vient ici. Ce que je veux remarquer, c'est que pour la première fois, les opérateurs de Cameroun ne sont pas obligés de se déplacer hors du Cameroun pour recevoir de la formation, mais ce sont nous qui sommes venus ici pour les retrouver. Une expertise que n'a pas manqué de saluer les différents représentants diplomatiques des deux États présent lors de ce regroupement. Et je souhaite
Alright, viewers of Seven News Television, you're just listening to Briz Gazak talking about a dental solution. If you know you have a problem, don't worry. There are so many um, dentists over there who can help you solve it. Viewers of Seven News Television, if you're just switching on your television set, this is your program, The Expert. Today, we are talking about plastic surgery and its importance to our society. With us, is a specialist, a plastic surgeon, who is no other person than Dr. Sami Oban. <clears throat> Dr. Sami? Yeah, thank you. You just followed that report about uh, a dentist. Yes. So how, do you, how can you manage somebody with uh, a dental formula as a plastic surgeon? Uh, well, I, as a plastic surgeon, I always meet uh, this group of people. The, the, the first thing I want to say is that <clears throat> we... In our society, we have for a long time looked at medicine to be on a very uh, individualistic uh, uh, approach. approach. So you have a doctor, he's everything and all that, or you have a procedure, you just have one doctor doing it. What I, what I saw in Europe is completely different. They have a, what you call a teamwork approach. All right. So normally, in, like in the US, we have dental surgeons in our team that we depend on what we do for example if, as i said if you take for example the cleft team when we go out to do cleft surgery so you have the dental surgeon you have the maxillofacial surgeon you have the plastic surgeons and other forms of specialties so it's a multi-disciplinary approach kind of thing so the 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 uh, the dental work whenever i come across a uh, dental anarchy or i'm doing a cleft procedure and yeah. and uh, cleft lip that's i'm operating there and then Somebody has it. I just tell you to see a dentist. Mm -hmm. The dentist has to manage it. <clears throat> so you see a dentist. I know some very beautiful, wonderful dentists in this country, and uh, they are doing such a fantastic job. So you go and meet them. Yes. When carrying out this operation, because on several times I've tried to call you, somebody else is picking up the call. He's busy. He's carrying out an operation. Who are those assisting you? Yes, I have a friend who comes from the U.S. His name is Patrick Gohan. He is one of my uh, main assistants. He is always with me every, everywhere, of everything I do. But I've tried to train some people. I have nurses who I have trained, like my OR nurse, 
have two ORNSs, uh, Amos <coughs> and uh, Clovis. Mm -hmm. They are well trained. They now, on the very beginning, I had difficulties because I there is no plastic surgery unit in Cameroon where you can say that these people have been there before. I had to create everything from scratch. Yeah. So I had to train these people how to respond as a uh, personnel working in the uh, uh, plastic surgery uh, unit. You have to train them for everything. But now I think they are trained. They have been trained. I've been able to train them and they are working with me. I still lack uh, um, uh, physicians to work with me. And uh, that is something which is very important that other uh, surgeons will get interested in plastic surgery and they can come around and know what is going on. Uh, most of the, those I've met, they just want to see what you're doing and see if they can go somewhere and do it. Do it, yeah. Well, it's not, it's not a problem. They can do that, but I think that's not the real approach. That's true. Uh, the real approach is that you, you, you form a team, you come, you learn how to do it, you form a team, and when you are grown and you are a master, you can start another team somewhere. You were talking about uh, aesthetic surgery and you made a lot of collaboration concerning the breast. If somebody's breast has been uh, aestheticized, okay, giving the person the beauty, can that person still give a child's breast milk? Yes, it depends the kind of procedure that was done on the breast. All right. For example, if I do a, a, bre a breast implants, yeah. I do breast implants, there are various techniques in breast implants. And one of the techniques I like to do in breast implants is what we call the retromuscular retropectoral muscles. So you put the, the breast implant behind the muscles. Okay. When you put it behind the pectoralis muscles, it gives a, a projection and it gives volume. It gives projection and volume. But it does not affect the breast tissue so the woman can still breastfeed. breastfeed. All right. Now, but when you put it intramammary, it may affect a bit the way the woman breastfeed, but not very much. If you do fat injection in the breast, it has no effect on the woman's breastfeeding because it's fat. Breast is all made up of fat. Breast is all fat. That's why when we touch it, we feel fine. It's fat. Nice, <laughs> nice circling things. I yeah. see. Yes. Dr. Sabi, yes. before carrying out the operation, do you usually invite the services of anesthesis? Oh, yes. Oh, my God. You cannot try it. Aesthetic surgery... You are dealing with people who are not sick. Okay. They don't have a problem. But so you are not pardoned if something goes wrong. My dear, everything must be done correctly. correctly. So we have an anesthetic, anesthetic consultation. We have uh, a series of investigations to do. After that, the anesthetist will consult, the anesthetist will see you, and we have proper equipment in our center for uh, uh, administering. Uh, anesthesia. There are various types of anesthesia which we use in aesthetic medicine, aesthetic surgery, aesthetic plastic surgery. One, we have what we call general, we have uh, local anesthesia. We can use local anesthesia to do procedures just as liposuction using what we call the client solution. You're right. That's number one. Number two, we have general anesthesia. You can put the whole patient to sleep, to sleep. and then you uh, when you do just general anesthesia, either you do general anesthesia by sedation, you sedate the patient and then the person sleeps, and then you can do your procedure with local anesthesia. Mm -hmm. You just put a breathing uh, uh, mask for the patient to, to be safe. Or you completely knock off the patient and you put an intubation tube, uh, an endotracheal intubation tube, and the patient is controlled by the machine, and you can go ahead and do your procedure carefully. <clears throat> when I do heavy procedures for about four hours, that's what I like to do. When you talk uh, of knocking off the patient, what does that mean? It means that the patient is completely unconscious wow. and is kept by the machine. We connect the patient to a breathing machine and then the breathing machine is taking care of the patient and uh, the anesthetist, they the drug from time to time, a bit of dose of bolus, some doses of the drug so that the patient doesn't wake up and the patient is completely paralyzed. I see. So the patient cannot move to affect me, disturb me. It gives me time for me to Major because aesthetic surgery is, I'm telling you, it's really complicated. You need to draw, you need to design. I work with tape, I have to measure, I draw, cancel, redraw, cancel, redraw, cancel, so that the, it must be precise. You don't, you don't, you don't, there's no room for, for mistake. And how do you manage um, uh, 
uh, manage it with uh, the constant electrical failure in our country? Oh, no. We have a 25 kg generator, Caterpillar generator, brand new, packed now in my place. All right. Functional. So once the electricity goes off, it takes off. Because imagine if I'm doing a liposuction, I have something we call a power liposuction. The machine helps me, the machine is helping me to liposuck. And then I have another piece of equipment which is a, a specialized equipment to liposuck. All right. So if these things go off, if electricity goes off, this, this, the whole procedure is in, a, in trouble. So we have a 25 kg caterpillar. You thought right of there. using a tape drawing and canceling. Do you use the pencil to do that? No, we don't. We have special markers. Okay. We have special markers which we make on the body, which are not easily uh, uh, wiped off. Okay. But we can use alcohol to wipe them off. So with those markers, we are able to measure because it must be the same size. Okay. So we have to measure. We look at the form. We in plastic surgery. A plastic surgeon is someone who sees the future today. He has to see what the breast will look like when he has finished he doing, doing it. it. So if you don't see it before, my dear, you'll be in trouble. That is very interesting, Dr. Oben Sami. Um, uh, let's find out from you, okay? Is there follow-up after the plastic surgery or the aesthetic plastic surgery is done? Definitely there is follow-up. <clears throat> when I operate on my patients, uh, we see our patient uh, three days after, one week after, and we have a constant telephone communication with our patient to know how they are doing. Because plastic surgery is good, but it is also linked with a lot of dangerous complications, Correct. deadly complications. So, which I don't want to name here before people get so frightened. <laughs> you see, so we have to follow up our patients before the procedure we explain to them the complications and what we do to avoid these complications. Then when we, 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 when we have done that, when the patient now understands, the patient can easily follow our instruction. Because if the patient doesn't understand, the patient will never follow the instruction. That's but if true. the patient understands that this is a danger I must avoid, it's an avoidable danger, yeah. then the patient is able to follow. Psychologically, how do you prepare your patients before taking them to the theater? We educate them. But it's a very difficult thing because in plastic surgery, aesthetic plastic surgery, the patient comes with an idea, an image, a dream that the patient has seen that the Botox will be like Kim Kardashian. Mm. So comes with a picture <laughs> and tell you, the this idea, is what I want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or come with a woman with a small thin waist line a team waistline like this okay. and tell you i want you to suck me to be like this woman so you are already <clears throat> dealing with somebody who has a psychology who is biased yeah do you see so you have to build the person's psychology to let the person know that it may not turn out to be exactly, exactly like as what you have seen there all right because what you see might not have been done by one procedure. Yeah. That you are just seeing the finished result. Yeah, that's but true. The, the finished result does not tell you what went on behind right. the scene. Mm. So a person come to you wants to have a Botox like Kim Kardashian, but does not know Kim Kardashian must have done two or three procedures to get to that to that size. Yeah. And the patient has just about three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand or five hundred thousand and want to have Kim Kardashian. <laughs> I I always tell I always tell my patient this. <laughs> There must be an understanding between what you want and what is feasible. Yeah. So when my patient tells you that this is what I want, I say that is correct. That's what you want, but it may not be feasible. This is what we can give you. Yeah. If when we always come to an agreement, and when we come to an agreement, you build the psychology of the patient. The patient now knows, okay, this is what is available, this is what I can get, this is what I cannot get, these are the complications, these are these, these are that. Okay, the patient prepares the mind for the surgery. Generally, before surgery, they used to tell patients not to eat. Is that the same thing you do with your own patients? Oh, it depends on what the patient is going to have for surgery right. and what kind of anesthesia. If my patient is going to have general anesthesia, uh, local anesthesia, for example, client uh, solution, your patient can eat. It's a one-day procedure. You come, I've infiltrate, we suck, you go home. Right. If the patient is going to have a general anesthesia, then the patient must follow the rules set down by the anesthetic associations on what 
what uh, general anesthesia entails. You talked of knocked out. When you knock somebody out, for how long will the person regain consciousness? We do. All our patients are on table recovery. Okay. It means immediately we finish the procedure, the patient recover on the table. Before we take the patient to the recovery room, the patient is fully awake. How? It means the patient can respond to pain, oh, right. can respond to call. Yeah, okay. But if I say fully awake, it's not a very good uh, word. But the person can respond to pain and to call. Oh. The person can respond, but may not respond uh, uh, um, uh, 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 in a very co co um, uh, uh, cognitive way, yeah. you see. But the person will respond <laughs> to you. Safe. Now, uh, this person now, we now know that the person has come out from anesthesia, we cannot put the patient on the recovery room and put a nurse beside the person to make sure the person doesn't beat the body from side to side. Uh, you talked about risks related to aesthetic plastic surgery. As a plastic surgeon, what are the risks in the procedure? Well, first, the first risk in the procedure is that you may not have what you desire. Okay. That's the first risk that the patient must know that you may not have what you desire. Second, the risk involved in plastics in aesthetic surgery is the same risk that general surgery has. When you're going for surgery, there's bleeding. You may die out of, uh, when they want to intubate you. A lot, I've seen people, I've seen patients die. Wow. During intubation, they have a cardiac arrest and they die. That may happen. You may have, uh, this uh, risk that are, uh, you have risk that are, uh, linked to anesthesia, risks list that are linked to surgery, then risks that are linked to the procedure itself. Oh, I see. For example, <clears throat> you may have a plastic surgery procedure and they put you a breast implant and the implant leaks or break down. Ah, that's a serious problem. Okay. Oh my God. I saw a woman, in, I don't want to call her name, from Kribi. She had a, an implant put in her and in Tunisia and then she came to Cameroon and the thing burst. Wow. So when I examine, I look at the echography result, I examine her because I knew the signs. I, exam I told her, no, 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 madam. This thing has burst and you're having capsular contraction. Get it out as soon as possible. And since it was linked to some insurance issues and other things, I had to tell her to go back to Tunisia. Yeah. I could remove it. Yes, I could remove it, I could change it and all that. But I explained to her what it entails and she said, no, I think you are correct. I will go back to Tunisia. So she went back to Tunisia. And if it happens like that and they don't, they don't move it fast, what's the outcome? Well, we have some women who have had cancers. Oh. Yes, like there is a famous That's case, fair. a famous case in, in France. I don't want to call names, uh, but it involves one company that was making breast implants that leaked. Yeah. And so these women developed cancers. And they finally, after some years, linked those breast cancers to the implants that were put there. Man, that company folded up. Yeah, the lawsuits were too many. That's why when I want to put an implant for a patient, I go for the best mantle. Mm. <laughs> I can imagine. Oh, yes. I go for mantle or magen. I can imagine that. Oh, yes. It costs a lot, about 2,000 euros. At about 2,000 euros, but you are very sure what you are putting in. So those are some of the risks. There are so many of them. There's also thromboembolic risk. Which is? That is... A fat enters into the blood. Blood doesn't need to have fat, fat. inside. Okay. Or blood, the blood clots don't need to float in blood. You don't need to have blood clots. Mm. So these procedures where the patient lies for, 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 for five hours, the patient may develop blood clots, which will now become a thrombus, oh. an embolus. An embolus is a free-floating blood clot in the body, in the, in the bloodstream. It can go and block a vessel in the heart, a vessel in the, uh, in the kidney, a vessel in the brain, and cause a lot of problem. Deven so these things are some very dangerous complications. That's why our patients, when they go for plastic surgery, we protect them for all that, from all that. Yes. All, all right, doctor, before we continue with our uh, topic for the day, I would like us to follow this report by Carol Taper. Viewers of Seven News Television, Carol Taper attended a workshop talking about red diseases and she came back with this report.
Des enfants aux côtés de leurs parents sont atteints par des maladies rares, aussi appelées maladies orphelines. Elles sont nombreuses et variées, pouvant affecter le système musculaire, squelettique, nerveux. Les maladies rares sont des maladies qui affectent un très faible pourcentage de la population dont sont déjà très mal connues. Ça, c'est la première des choses qu'il faut savoir. Maintenant, la plupart des maladies rares ne seront pas forcément curables. Mais par contre, on est capable d'accompagner l'enfant. Il n'existe pas un médecin seul pour s'occuper de ses enfants. Et ces enfants ont véritablement besoin d'une prise en charge lorsqu'on sait qu'en Europe, elle touche une personne sur 2000 et près de 60 millions en Afrique qui restent à ce jour délaissés et sans soins. Et la plupart des victimes sont des enfants. Elle est très spécifique parce que chaque enfant qui est ici est à un niveau d'évolution complètement différent et le plus souvent avec une pathologie complètement différente. Donc dans le cas par exemple des infimités motrices cérébrales, qu'on appelle généralement les IMC, la prise en charge sera multidisciplinaire. Le neuropédiatre va faire son rôle parce que beaucoup de ces enfants vont faire des crises épileptiques qui vont être gérées par le neuropédiatre. Mais il existe des problèmes physiques et fonctionnels qui sont ceux que nous adressons. Par exemple, l'enfant va avoir des difficultés à s'asseoir tout seul, à parler, à se lever, à marcher. Il va avoir des déformations du fait qu'il est incapable de contrôler son corps. À l'heure actuelle, on compte 6 à 7 000 maladies rares selon l'Organisation mondiale de la santé. L'enfant souffre d'une maladie rare. Bon, je ne peux pas. Bon, je peux dire qu'elle est trisonomique. C'est vrai que ce n'est pas facile. Mais pas, pas l'encouragement de, de mes camarades, de mes voisins. Je sais, je sais de gérer par le mieux que je peux. Si presque toutes les maladies génétiques sont des maladies rares, toutes les maladies rares ne sont pas génétiques. Elles sont graves, souvent chroniques, parfois évolutives. Mais aujourd'hui, plusieurs centaines de ces maladies peuvent être diagnostiquées par un test biologique. Ainsi naissent de nouveaux espoirs avec les perspectives offertes par une politique européenne et les chercheurs qui partagent les résultats le font en réseau. Yes, sir, viewers of Table News Television, if you are just switching on your sets, this is your program, The Experts. Today we are talking about a little bit of complicated issues, plastic surgery. But do not go to the market and look for a plastic bag. We are not talking about that. We are talking about plastic surgery. The importance of plastic surgery in our society can only be given to us by a specialist, a plastic surgeon. Dr. Sami Oben. He has not asked you to go to the market and look for plastic bags. We are not talking about plastic bags here. We are talking about <laughs> surgery. And he hammered on aesthetic surgery. Yes, Dr. Sami, we are talking about aesthetic surgery. And you made mention of uh, club leaf palettes. Is it aesthetic or reconstructive surgery? That's reconstructive surgery. That's reconstructive. Yes. You know, there is a very thin line between aesthetic surgery and uh, reconstructive, reconstructive surgery. surgery. Aesthetic surgery is something you do that is not, ne is not necessary for life. Okay. But you do it to make you more beautiful and happier. Happier. Why reconstructive surgery is something that you need to rebuild the form and the function to make the person's life to be a uh, to live to, for the person to live well okay for example you know when in belgium we used to steal a lot when a woman put to bed yeah there is a muscle in her abdomen which is called the rectus abdominis muscle when she gets pregnant this muscle opens up all right and when it opens up the muscle is linked like this but when she gets pregnant the muscles has what you call diastasis the muscle opens and when it opens something like a hernia forms in between and it makes her belly to fall oh. <coughs> fall in front yeah now that is the woman's belly is not good so when the woman comes now for us and needs aesthetic surgery maybe for liposuction or for abdominoplasty and we look at it and we see that it's an aesthetic procedure but the patient can come and tell you please you know that the insurance does not pay 
for aesthetic procedures. Yeah. The insurance pay for reconstructive so, 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 so. procedure. So I do an <clears throat> abdominoplasty liposuction and all that, make the woman abdomen look good. But then I write there that it is as a result of the fact that the woman has been having many children yeah. and her abdomen has opened up. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> so, just because you want the insurance to pay. Yeah. So, you see, a procedure can be aesthetics. And can be reconstructed. Can be reconstructed. It just depends on who sees how you see it and who is responding to it. All right. I understand that. Um, uh, <clears throat> Doctor. Yes. You were talking of the, uh, you made mention of 900,000 francs for some aesthetic surgery. Is it uh, the common Price no. For all, or no, 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 no. You have different prices? We have different prices for different <clears throat> procedures. Right. And I'm just simply saying that if you want to do an aesthetic procedure, you should be talking about 900,000. We have procedures that range up to 2 million francs. Wow. Yes. We have procedures that range up to 5 million francs. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because now in aesthetic surgery, we have added what we call aesthetic medicine. Yeah. Uh, that's a whole lot. That's a whole no, we're going to talk about a, a, aesthetic medicine. Aesthetic medicine, <laughs> yes. You, that's the one I love. My okay. boss now, the one with the guy who trained me, he doesn't do he doesn't do anything again apart from aesthetic surgeries and aesthetic, aesthetic medicine. medicine. That's where the money is. We inject you botox. We know we do lipofilling, we fill your face, we can put some small fat on your face, we can inject your PROP, we can smoothen your face, we can change, do some little things. You know, when your, your face begins to fall, we can make it raise it up, we do threading of your face. Oh my God, nice procedures. And that's where the money is. And that's why old people, old people don't want to go get old. Yeah, <laughs> that's why you see, a, you see, you see a, 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 like the white lady, you see a white lady, she's always looking pretty and beautiful. Yeah. Because she does all these procedures, they make her, there's collagen, in, in, putting with PRP on, she looks good. So she doesn't have deflation and uh, volume loss of the face and resorption. They compensate for all that. That's, that's a different story. It's really a different story, yes. Dr. Mm -hmm. Samuel Ben. And, uh, what do you think the government should do in order to train plastic surgeons in our country? Since because you've tried on several occasions to, to bring it to, the, to your bosses. It just needs the will of the government. Ah. If the government decides today that they want to train plastic surgeons, tomorrow they'll start training them. The question is, is it necessary for our society? Yes, very, very necessary. Gone are those days we used to think that aesthetic procedures are not uh, necessary. Let me give you one. Take, for example, Lady XXXX wants to have a breast job done for her. And she's, instead of having it in Cameroon, yeah. coming in Cameroon and finds a plastic surgeon like Dr. Oben, I will do the breast job for her. She pays me about 2 million francs. In that 2 million francs, I pay a new. Yeah. I want you to know, because there are some things we don't, we don't understand. That's true. I pay a new from that money. I pay Cam Waters. From the, from the money. I have uh, nurses yeah. who are working with me. I pay them from that money. Your telephone calls. My telephone calls, I pay them from that, from money. that money. Are you getting me? Yeah. And so many, you just keep going on and on and on and on. The money stays here. Yeah. Okay. Now, because the government has failed to understand that we have capital flight as a result of absence of aesthetic surgeons, <clears throat> Lady X takes her flight she pays to to SN Brussel mm -hmm. 500,000 francs not so yeah and goes to Belgium she stays in Belgium in the hotel for 10 days pays the money that she worked in Cameroon over there in Belgium down she goes to the hospital she pays about 3,000 euros to get all these things done Damn. for her who has lost Cameroon government just train aesthetic surgeons. Yes. That's all. Yeah. Today we are talking about medical tourism. I have patients whom I have operated from Gabon. How? Oh. Yes. I have a lady who went to my boss in Brussels. And my boss did not operate her. I did not know. She came to me and I, I just looked at her and said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is what. She never even told me that she had gone to Brussels. I worked on her for six months. When I finished my last procedure, she says, sit down, I want to tell you something. 
I was in Brussels and I went to such and such and such a person. When I came to you, you told me that that man is your boss. I did not want to tell you anything because you'll be afraid. Mm. But sir, I want to I want to salute you. You've given me what your boss could not give me. I almost fell. I almost fell down. <laughs> I told her, if you told me you went to my boss, I, 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 I would never have touched you. <laughs> Do you see? She yeah. came from Gabon. She looks at me. If you, she looks at me like a, a demigod. Yeah. She said, I changed her life completely. Yes, yeah. I did. I completely changed her life. Oh, Dr. Sami, you see, this issue of aesthetic surgery is uh, broad. We can't really finish it today. I'm really sorry we have to come to the end of this program at this point in time. But uh, I will say thanks for coming once again, despite the traffic and your busy schedule. Yes. You created time coming to our station to talk about uh, plastic surgery. I say plastic surgeon. Thanks again. I hope next time you will not hesitate uh, coming to this studio because this is almost a year and a half I've been trying to invite you to this place. <laughs> I, I want to thank you, Mr. Taka. And uh, it's true, you've been searching for me. It's not easy for me to I leave. Know. And I enjoy your program. And I like the theme of the program. Because I like it, I will come again. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Sami Oben. Yes. Viewers of Seven News Television, we have come to this program, The Experts. We are drawing the curtain close, but not closing the doors of Seven News. For this program to be a success, it is not thanks to the presenter alone, Takang Biso. I have people working that you don't see or hear them. We have the cameraman right here with us, Sesh Biwole. You have the person operating the special button to give you the beautiful images. He's there in a second room hiding himself, Landry. I respect you so much for that. The editors are there, Otans Ogbono and Roland Amana. God bless you as I love you. Don't go away. Keep on watching 7 News as the news comes up at 7 p.m. Why? Your special sports program Club Elite Plus is there after this program. God bless you. Bye.